Good morning. morning. Welcome to the Earl St Andrews. A special welcome to any visitors worshipping with us this morning. Please make yourself known to the elders and sign the visitor's book at the front door. We would welcome all those who are joining us online this morning or watching the recording later. The intimations were on the screen as you came in. Sorry, no news sheet this morning, but due to the holidays. A big thanks to all who helped and supported our soup and sweet lunch last Sunday. The outstanding total of 242.50 was realised. This will go to our makeover project. The <clears throat> voluntary donations for old parish communion tokens have so far reached £300. This sum is going towards supplying a Wi-Fi link for Glenview Court. Tokens are still available. On Friday, 25th October at 7.30, the renowned Clyde Bank Salvation Army Band will be holding a concert in their sanctuary. Tickets are £3 for adults and £1.50 for children and are available from any member of the social committee or pay at the door. The Congregational Board meets this Thursday in the small hall at 7.30. There is a tea and coffee bar in the large hall after the service. Please come along and enjoy further fellowship. Give thanks that Jean Aitken, Betty Graham and Carol McKinley and Jim Weir are now home from hospital. Please keep Alec Richmond, Ward 8 and Betty Byfield, Ward 4, both at Wissie General Hospital in your prayers. <clears throat> the, we have a very happy announcement as well this morning. Uh, Willie Harvey has a special birthday. He's 88. Oh. Happy birthday, Willie. Have a good knees up. <laughs> Our Minister Derek Hughes is on holiday for two weeks and starts back on Tuesday, the 29th of October. Any pastoral requirements during this period, please get in touch with me, Crawford Moffat, in the first instance. Next week, Dorothy Russell, chaplain at St John's Prison, will once again be leading our worship. Thanks to Andrew Stevens, who is playing the organ this week while our Director of Music, Eric Garrison, is on holiday. It is my pleasure to welcome Jim Paxson to lead our worship this morning. Jim is a leader in training with the Church of Scotland and has been in placement with us for a number of weeks. Jim stays in Whitburn, he is married to Marie, and has three daughters and six grandchildren. I know what that's like, I've got six as well. <laughs> he has been an active Christian for 25 years and loves to share his faith with others. Jim, may God's blessing be on you as you lead our worship this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Did you know that there are bishops in the Church of Scotland? At the Bible study on Monday, I found out that there is actually bishops in the Church of Scotland. I announced, or I was speaking about Derek, and I said the Reverend Hughes, and I was told that is wrong terminology. I've got to use the Reverend Derek Hughes to be correct. But our own minister, my own minister announced that two uh, person in training for ministry, the minister that is his tutor, should be referred to as my bishop. So for those that are into trivial quiz, <laughs> now you know that the Church of Scotland has bishops and has been announced my bishop is on holiday. <laughs> Let us call to worship. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Often we are too busy to take that moment of rest. Think of the last hour 
of your life. Getting ready for church. Possibly children to get ready. Where is this? Where is that? We walk towards the church with the cares of the world on our shoulders. Now as we prepare to worship, let us calm our beating hearts and come before our gracious Lord. Let us for this holy hour leave the world outside and sit at the feet of Jesus. We will open our worship by singing, Master speak, thy servant heareth. His mission praise, 459. Thank you. As we open in prayer, the <coughs> poem, hymn poem I will be reading is from the pen of Fanny Crosby. And it was just listen to the words. Let us pray. Hold thou my hand, so weak I am and helpless. I dare not take one step without thy aid. Hold thou my hand, for then, O loving Saviour, no dread of ill shall make my soul afraid. Hold thou my hand, and closer, closer draw me to thy dear self, my hope, my joy, my all. Hold thou my hand, lest haply I should wander, and missing thee, my trembling feet should fall. Hold thou my hand, 
The way is dark before me, without the sunlight <coughs> on thy face divine. But when by faith I catch its glo radiant glory, what heights of joy, what rapture songs are mine. Hold thou my hand, that when I reach the margin of that lone river, thou did cross for me, a heavenly light may flash across its waters, and every wave like crystal bright shall be. We are gathered, dear Lord, in your church to meet with you on a very special way. Often we feel so small, so unworthy, to come sit in your presence. We carry on regardless. When we consider the responsibility on your shoulders, we think your time is too precious to take time to sit with us. Yet we look to the ministry of your Son and note just how many times he went to that quiet place just to be alone with you. We take pleasure in what we do for you without taking the time to be with you, Lord. We worship you as the creator and finisher of all things, but we fail to understand where we fit into your ever-expanding tapestry. We seem so insignificant, yet we reach out to you as individuals, each with our own problems and concerns, each in our own way, each with our own confessions as we yet again stray from the pathway. Lord, we may be unworthy, but by your grace we always have that road back. You always wait for us with your arms wide open, ready to take us under your wing. Hear us in a moment of silent confession as we call on the cleansing power of your ever-loving grace. Lord, hear us as we conclude this prayer with the words your Son taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing again, and it's CH4, 400, sorry, 500 in CH4, Lord of Creation.
Now, the two scripture readings this morning. The first scripture reading is Psalm 63. Psalm 63. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary, and bold he behold held your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be satisfied as with the richest of foods, and singing lips my mouth will praise you. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Those who want to kill me will be destroyed. They will go down to the depths of the earth. They will be given over to the sword and become food for jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by God will glory in him. With the mouth of liars, while the mouth of liars will be silenced. Amen. The second reading is from Luke, Luke chapter 10, and I'll be reading verses 38 to 42, at the home of Martha and Mary. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her, her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to come and help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Amen. And may the Lord add the blessing to the reading of his word. And we're going to sing again. And we're back to mission praise. Take time to be holy. Take time to be holy. Speak oft with the Lord. And that's really what we're thinking of today. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing his blessings to seek.
That was a beautiful hymn we just sang. But I was looking at the second verse, and it said everything, actually, that I'm going to try and say to you this morning. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. When the world gets too busy, where do you go? It's nice to come into a church. You have that feeling of peace. Outside, the world is still rushing by. But here you can come, you can sit, you can relax in God's company. Nothing else should matter while you're here in church this morning. You have come to be with the Lord of the universe. And you get a great welcome in this church. I came as, a few weeks ago as a stranger. But I, was felt, I have felt welcome here from the time I walked through the doors. Many of you have asked about my family. And as Crawford said when he introduced me, I've got my wife, three daughters, and six <coughs> grandchildren. I've always said that I had five grandchildren for practice just to prepare us for little Emma. I want to show you a little video clip. Now, this child you're about to see is 20 months old. She's into everything and she knows no fear. If we can just have the first sort of, half a minute of the video clip, just to introduce you to little Emma. She will come up later in the service. to the choir, they've not got the television this morning. <laughs> now you can see why two years ago I had a lovely head of brown hair and why the grey hairs are coming very rapidly. Back to the sermon. Before we look at Martha and Mary, I'd like to just briefly go through Psalm 63 with you. And it's more to try and give you the feel of what David was feeling. Not so much of what he was saying, but of what he was feeling at the time. It shows the hunger he had for God. From the first verse, that hunger in Psalm 63 is very evident. When he goes on to verses 2 to 5, he's trying to block everything else out to draw closer to God. And then when he gets through to verses 6 to 8, as it's just very brief, you can see where he is trying to be one with God. Everything he does, God has given his place. David was not the perfect human being. If you've read through the stories of David, he had many imperfections. But the one thing David never did was take his eyes off the Lord. He always believed that the Lord was with him wherever he was. He feels the power of God in his journeys. How do you feel when you're sitting quietly and trying to be with the Lord? Do you feel overawed by his presence? It is a very humbling thing to sit at the feet of Jesus. As we go on to 
the story of Martha and Mary. We're now reaching the end of the Tati holiday. I wonder how many here remembers the fact that the October holiday used to be the Tati holiday. It's when the kids got a couple of weeks off to help with the Tati Hauken. I don't know how many of you followed the, the tractor with the spinning flail that threw the potatoes out. And you had to run along with a sore back and try to fill your basket before the machine came round again. And that's where the start of the October holiday was. Very quickly, some schools are back. Some are back next week. That's over. Then we're rushing on to Halloween. And the kids will have parties at Halloween. As soon as Halloween's over, they're collecting stuff for bonfires for Guy Fox. You've got the, the fires barely out when you're getting ready for the remembrance service. And then the minister has got two weeks, which he has to use to try and sum up his year before we get to that word that I'm not supposed to mention. But we're into Christmas. I chose the reading of Martha and Mary because Martha was in this same sort of period and we all feel it right through till after Christmas. There is always something to be done. You've got presents to buy, you've got decorations to go up, the kids and yourselves will have Christmas parties for this, that and the other. And we tend to lose the fact that we should be taking time with our Lord. We might be working for our Lord, but we're really taking, we're not taking the time to rest in the Lord's presence. Picture coming up for Christmas Day. <coughs> Mum traditionally will be in the kitchen trying to get the meal ready. Everybody else will probably be sitting watching the telly to catch up on the telly. It's quite a few years ago now that Marie, my wife, stopped doing Christmas dinner on Christmas Day. Well, she worked, she was a nurse. If she was on shift, we would have Christmas dinner to suit. Now, normally, we have it on Christmas Eve. This is an abiding memory of Christmas. It was presents food and the fact that her mother spent all day in the kitchen. This is what happened when Jesus visited Martha. Martha disappeared into the kitchen and Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. She'd be busy sorting out the food, the drink, everything else. How often have you had somebody visit your house? And I could have done with a wee bit longer. I've not been here very long. Where in fact I've been here two or three hours. And you spent the first hour getting the tea and the scones and the biscuits ready for them. And you brought them through and you fed them. Then there was quietness while you ate it. You had a few minutes to catch up and had to go again. Jesus said, Mary is doing what I am looking for from her. She's sitting there at my feet. She's listening to me. She's learning. Have a look at Jesus himself. Mark 1, verse 35. In the morning, long before sunrise, Jesus went to a place where he, he could be alone to pray. He went for time alone with his father. Luke 5, verse 16. But he would go away to places where he could be alone to pray. One of these days, Jesus went out onto the mountainside to pray. 
and spent the night in prayer. Matthew 14, verse 23. And having dismissed the multitude, he went into the mountain alone to pray. Luke 6, 12. Before he chose the twelve disciples, he went to the mountain and spent the night in prayer. Even the night before the crucifixion, we all remember the story where Jesus and the disciples went to the garden in Gethsemane. And Jesus asked them to keep watch while he went alone to pray. Have you ever thought that that is what God wants from us? Look at Jesus' instruction on prayer in Matthew 6. Go into your room, shut the door, and take time to be with the Lord. You don't have to say much. I asked myself some questions, and I asked you to ask yourselves the same questions. How long did I sit at the feet of Jesus last week or the week before? More to the point, how long will I sit there next week? Each of us worships in different ways. We all do not follow the same pattern. In the same manner, we all have different gifts and strengths. Some are led to speak, some to comfort, some to cater. Some will visit where some dare to tread. You will know people here in the church who do these things because the truth is we all need them. If no one spoke, we would not get the word. If no one comforted, we be, would be looked on as hard-hearted. If no one catered, we wouldn't have any social gatherings. Look at the uh, soup and sweet lunch we held last week. How many folk strive very hard to put on that lovely spread? And look at the social gathering that was in the church that day. So we need people to cater for this, the social. If no one called, we would be lonely. A Sunday school needs teachers, a Bible study, a leader. On these things, the church is built. However, to be efficient, the director's job has to stay with Jesus. Through the Holy Spirit, we gain the insights we need, the, wisdoms, the wisdom to do things we are not taught, the strength to do his will. But it is at the feet of Jesus we must come to rest. Anything else is a recipe for exhaustion and burnout. As this Christmas approaches, make sure you're coming back to Take your rest at the feet of our Lord. <coughs> Jesus died on the cross to give us a fuller life. His pain on the cross was for each of us. We cannot ignore him. We cannot walk by on the other side, or we should not. Often we do. You reach a point where to return can be embarrassing. Now, this has happened to me on quite a few occasions, and I would think it has happened to most of us here. Ever thought, I should phone. You put somebody to phone. I should phone. Then you get a wee bit determined. I will phone. It moves on to, I should have phoned. And then you get round to thinking, it's too late to phone. 
Don't let the same thing happen to your spiritual life. Jesus is waiting on that call. He paid the price for that call. We can speak to him in prayer at any time. However, it is a gift to sit at his feet. Jesus, in John 13, verses 3 to 8, tells us it is a two-way thing. We must let Jesus minister to our needs. In his act of washing the disciples' feet, he showed that no one gets so high and mighty that he is above these things. <coughs> Often by selective service, we can create a situation into which we can fit comfortably. Peter would have been happy to wash Jesus' feet, but it was totally wrong the other way around. In John's version of Martha and Mary, Mary washes Jesus' feet with valuable perfume, drying it with her hair. But Martha still worked in the kitchen. The work will be there long after we have been gone, after we have gone. What we do now is up to us. My prayer for you is that you will find the time to come to Jesus and rest a while in his glory. I said I would get back to little Emma. I love my grandchildren to bits. I've got an old reclining chair that I sit in. It's virtually molded to my body. But it's got a wide arm on the left hand side. And at some time in their lives, they have all sat on that arm and cuddled in. Now you've seen little Emma, she's a live wire. Cuddles from her are quite rare. But it is absolutely brilliant when she gives you that little bit of a cuddle. <coughs> she just cuddles in. Hello, Papa. Have you ever thought that that is why God created you in the first place? He created you for companionship. You are God's companions. When you sit at the feet of Jesus, when you come under the wing of the Lord, that is why you were created. I didn't put a hymn in after the sermon because I would like us now to take a little while just sitting at the feet of the Lord. The choir is going to sing, Be Still with the presence of the Lord. And while they sing, just sit quietly and feel the presence of the Lord moving through your lives. Just in the silence. Thank you.
Be still for the presence of the Lord. Be still, stay still, as the offering will now be uplifted. Thank you. Let us give thanks. Let us pray. Lord, for the gifts you have lavished upon us, we thank you. Often we fail to appreciate where they come from. Lord, this money we have given is a love token to say thank you. Please use it and our talents to extend your kingdom. Your love for us knows no bounds. The pleasure and beauty we have in our lives are down to you and your abundant generosity. At times we do, do feel distant from you, but usually that can be through our own thoughtless actions. We fail to look for you in all situations. We now concentrate our prayers on the support of others. For the family whose grief we share, for their peace, now we pray. For all families who have lost a loved one, now we pray. 
For my friend and prayer partner, recovering from a hip replacement, for a quick recovery, Lord, now we pray. For those known to each one of us, who for reasons of ill health or injury are in hospital, now we pray. For the healing hands of the medical staff who care for them, Lord, now we pray. For those who spend their time doing your work, Lord, we thank you for their willingness. We thank you for the boys of the Boys Brigade and the girls of the Girls Brigade and from the girls that gather for the Brownies. We also give thanks, Lord, for our junior church. Lord, many churches are low in their junior ranks. We pray that they can be more successful. But we also thank you that our youth work is thriving. Into your hands, Father, we commit our young folk. A special prayer has also to go out, Father, for those that make it all happen. The youth workers in any capacity, often they go unnoticed and unthanked. Lord, bless them and keep them safe. Lord, we often forget to pray. We are too busy or think it is not our place. Forgive us when we do this. We thank you for giving us the right to pray in your name. O oh Lord, when we fail to do so, forgive us. Lord, while we do confess there are things we fail to pray for, let us pray for those who did. They bridged that gap. When we think of Christian aid and other charities raised in your name, Lord, we pray for those who went to the dangerous mission fields around the world. We ask you to bless them and keep them safe. But Lord, we also ask a blessing on those who help here at home. Those who hold functions and do sponsorship to raise funds for you, Lord. Lord, in this holy hour, we have little time to petition you for all the items on our hearts. In the next few silent moments, we each take time to offer up our own silent prayers. Hear our personal prayers now, Lord. For those prayers spoken and unsaid, we pray and petition you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And amen. <coughs> Thank you. Children to come back in.
Good morning. Good morning. Wait a minute, I'll come back. <laughs> Good morning. That's a bit better. I heard that. <coughs> Good morning. Same to you. I want to know what you've been up to. Who have you been learning about today? Hands up. Don't shout out. Who have you been learning about? Been? First God. Were you getting told about the Canaanite woman? Yes. And what was different about the Canaanite woman than Jesus and his followers? The baby wasn't well. The baby wasn't well. She wasn't. A Jew. She wasn't the same nationality. I don't know. The baby was happy. She got better. And that was because she trusted Jesus. Some of his own followers didn't trust him. The bigger ones. Sitting there in the back row all quiet. Do you, do you trust me? Put your hands up if you trust me. <coughs> There's one. Come on. Come on. I, I want the three of the bigger I don't want the small ones. I want the three of the bigger ones. No volunteers. You won't get hurt, I promise. You're big enough, yeah. There's one. There's one. Come on, I want... I want Two of you out the back row. Yes, come on then. And one of the girls. That one with the bunny smile. Come on. Right. I'll set this down. I've got to catch you. Do you really, really trust me? Right. Okay. You won't get hurt. Now, I want to keep your, keep your body very stiff. Okay? And I want you to fall back and I'm going to catch you. you oh, oh. Uh-uh. No, no. He, he took a step back. Try again. Don't take a step back. You're a failure. One more, one more go. Don't step back. Keep your feet together. You right? You're no good. You go sit down. You can be... Right? Okay. That's, that's a, a brave man. He sends a woman first. Right, just keep your feet together and fall back and I'll catch you. Yes! Now you've got to do it. Right, fall back, I'll catch you. Come on. One more time. No. You see that? We always say we trust, but you're stepping back. Right, feet together. Right, you keep stiff and fall back. Oh, no. <laughs> no. So the girl was the only one that trusted me. But no, our faith is like that, actually. It's all about trust. And quite often we do think that we trust enough. But quite often, when it comes to the crunch, we don't. So well done. You kept your feet together. Both of the boys stepped back. Because you just didn't trust quite enough. Okay, let's a wee, a wee word of prayer for our young church. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, it is lovely to see all these young children come into our church. It is lovely to see them, Father. They inspire our hearts. Because, Father, they are our future. Father, encourage them. Speak with them and let their faith and trust in you grow stronger as time passes. For these things we pray in your son's precious name. Amen. And we'll bring our service to a conclusion by singing.
I should know because I've picked them, but CH4, 198. <coughs> Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. <coughs> this service draws to an end. Father, guard us and keep us safe as we go from these hallowed doors. Father, send us forth in your Son's precious name, in your precious name, and through your Holy Spirit, guide our paths now and forevermore. Amen.